Hello everyone, welcome to this Road to Cheltenham Roundup. I've been joined by Ruby Walsh and we're going to reflect on what's happened here on the first day of the festival. You've probably got the advantage over me. I reckon you'll have seen the replays more times than, than I have. I've only seen it once Why? live. Well, because I was interviewing and you were, you know, you had the benefit of all these replays you on were Fancy standing, you, you were standing in the prayer room with the big screen at the bottom of the ring in front of you. <laughs> I was, I was. I waiting was. for horses to come in, which uh, I have now realised takes forever. <laughs> it, it does. It does go by like a flash when you're actually... When you're up on a horse, you just seem to be back in the prayer room before you, before you even know it. But um, when you're standing and waiting, they do seem to take quite a while to come back. Let's talk about the main event of the day, Epitant. Well, she it turned out to, to be all that. She was very, very slick over her hurdles and it looked like a dream ride. It was. Perfect place all the way. Big day, big race rider, Barry Garrity delivered. Uh, she was the one horse in the race that we have highlighted many times that could be improving and be the standout horse. And she was. I thought Sharjah ran very credible, mm. creditably. You mentioned that they were going to change the taxes riding more patiently than last time. Yeah, and there was something Patrick Mullen said actually after Leperstown. He felt that he'd ridden them handily to cover Honeysuckle and he hadn't jumped or ran as well as he could been ridden a bit more prominently so he reverted to his usual tactics and it worked for him he finished second ran a blinder um, but I thought Epitante was a very good winner and she will be anti-post favourite for a long time for the champion hurdle yeah she will with that seven pound mes allowance she's deadly uh, I know connection with immediately thinking about Sharjah what would have happened if it had been a sander surface well surely Epitante would have liked that too I agree yeah, absolutely. Darvis Star ran very well. Ran an absolute blinder. Uh, it's incredible how much he's improved from red to 105 to where he is now, and uh, great thrill for the owners. And how about Pentland Hills? Did you have a view on why he underperformed? I think it was obvious when he didn't win at Haydock. Mm. Um, he was home and hosed in Haydock and managed to lose. I wasn't keen on him anyway. They were, they're going to be blaming the ground here. You think that's irrelevant? Blame what they want. Okay, right. Let's move on to the first race of the day, which was a corker. We should mention the fact that we've actually had standing starts. So we've had three full starts again today. We had a full start in the Supreme, in the Arkle, and also in the Champion Hurdle. It's Supreme, I could see it happening. And we said it, Lydia, when we did the course walk here. People forget that the jockeys have had months of the build-up as well and the hype and the pressure and the atmosphere in the crowd I can see why it happens with novices in the Supreme in the Arkle where we two, we two flighty horses yeah. notebook and cashback notebook charged got cashback running they were just both out of control that happens and then in the champion hurdle I'm not sure, it was one or two on the outside uh, that, 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 that broke that and caused the false start. Yeah, yeah I felt they could have possibly gone there. Um, I thought the Northern Trust was no, no uh, lesser sort of untidy start. And would you believe I didn't watch the start of the Northern Trust? Right, OK, and they, that, that one went first time. But anyway, so back to, the, back to the Supreme. And the reason I mentioned the standing start was I felt that probably Davy Russell felt right at the start that the standing start meant that he was not in the position he would ideally have wanted initially on Abracadabras. No, but he adapted to it and he gave the horse a wonderful ride. The race just fell apart in front of him at the wrong time when uh, Asterian France jumped into Elixir Dana and all of a sudden the Red Sea opened and Davy was there. Nothing he could do about it and he sat as long as he could. Mm. But it's just the way it unfolded. I thought Nico de Bonville adapted his situation really well and Shishkin, when he made a mistake at the first in the back, he gave the horse time to recover. He tucked in down the hill, was lucky to avoid the fallers and he showed that turn of foot that he showed in Newbury to get up and win. I think when Davy looks back at the race, he won't be thinking about what happened at the start and he'll acknowledge that really Shishkin had probably had a rougher passage all the way around. He did, definitely did. And Shishkin made a bad mistake. I'd say when he looks back at it, he'd be just ruined that uh, Elixir Dane fell because Elixir Dane had stayed up he'd have carried Davy Russell further Yeah it was a shame wasn't it Asteria and Falange I mean we were highlighting how he jumped right and we thought that that was going to be a disadvantage but goodness he almost completely changed the race He did uh, the third last especially he went very right the third last and then he did change the race because if you see it from behind actually James Bones jockey camp mm -hmm. shows it where you see him right. catching uh, Asteria and Falange behind and knocking him over OK, Shishkin, what, they're, they're talking chasing. They think he's an article type for next season. Uh, I would be thinking the same, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, he'd be some riding He's a very good horse. Whereas Gordon is thinking champion hurdle type about abacadabras. And horses that get beaten in the screen, you know, can come on and they, prove themselves in the champion. They can, because the winners don't have a great record anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's move on to the Arkle. And as you mentioned, there was a, a full start. And we had Notebook and Cashback, the two horses we were expecting to be keen, getting above themselves. And they did. And they, but look, I can't say the false start uh, caused them to run the way they ran. They both ran way under par. Mm -hmm. Both of them disappointed. I thought the mistake at the second line, actually it was Aidan Coleman's manoeuvre away from three out when he went by Paul Townend, closed over the door, got Mark Walsh behind him, Mark had to come out and come around him, then Faculty Diaries missed the second last, but I thought the winner had a bit up her sleeve, even when she went to the last, she pricked her ears, put the kettle on, and she was a good winner, it was a very good ride, she was a good winner, I didn't give her enough credit when she won here in November, mm -hmm. I thought she was better than the English, but I didn't think she was as good as the top Irish ones, but I was wrong. 
the mark the date and time. Um, the uh, the mistake by um, Fakir Dudar is to out. How significant was that? It was significant, and of course, Mark Walsh would think if he flew it, what might have been. But I thought the winner had a bit up her sleeve. Okay, so it's not it's not didn't make the difference between victory and defeat I for you. Definitely watching the replay, I didn't think so. Okay, um, and then we had the mayor's hurdle, and this was something of a surprise. Certainly, when I spoke to Willie Mullins immediately afterwards, he seemed a bit shocked that uh, Benny Dijer had been beaten by Honeysuckle. The race winning move, nipping up the inside by Rachel Blackmore. It was. She got a great run through at the back of the second last. Uh, Stormy Island went to her right, going to her, but when she landed. Robbie Power held that line and the gap was open for Edge of Blackmore. She darted into it, Paul Town and had to come around. There wasn't that much in it at the end, and you're just thinking if that door gets closed and she's in a pocket, but she was in going to the hurdle, mm. she's in that pocket and has to try and get herself out of it, it's a different result. But look, it was one person got the rub of the green, the other didn't, and Honeysuckle definitely got it. But she had a lot of horse left because she reached at the last, so she had to have plenty in the tank to make the jump that she that she that she did. And she the closer they got to the line, the more definite Honeysuckle was going to win. Yeah, absolutely. She, and she had to be good to nip up that inside. You were quite critical on ITV Racing of Robbie Power. Would you stand by that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a manoeuvre when you're riding. You like the guy in front to go back in and keep the doors closed. If I'm coming around, always with me, maybe I was a bit old-fashioned and it was something that annoyed me as a jockey, but if I was coming around you, I wanted everyone else to come around you too. Mm. So that would be the way I would have saw it. Slightly old-fashioned, but I think it was critical. It's a manoeuvre he should have made and gone back in. Well, he also felt that the race, maybe the race wasn't strongly enough run and that was within his team's hands. Yeah, but it's not team tactics in William Moses. Like, uh, Robbie Power was riding for Jared Sullivan. He's riding Stormy Island to do her best. Danny Muddles is riding El Field to do his best. They weren't there as pacemakers for mm. Benny Dejew. They're all different connections and they were all ridden on their own merits. And that's the way it's always been in Willie's. Mm. So you say it's in their hands, Team Mullins, not when they're different owners involved. I wasn't it's suggesting not. Team Taxi, it was more that, you know, looking back on the race and thinking, well, I wish they'd gone a bigger pace, that was down to their own horses. It was, but that, like that, Paul could have made that decision and gone on, on Benny Dejou, Rachel Blackmore and Jake the pace into it away from the stand. So that's decisions you make when you're riding, when you adapt. I mean, things work out for you, you've made the right call, when they don't, you've made the wrong call. But that, unfortunately, is life and worse things will happen. We'll leave you with the National Hunt Chase as well. Carefully selected, his jumping did undo him. He was careful and then he made some mistakes. I think it was his jump, but I thought it was the way he raced. I thought he raced way too keenly. He okay. got into a muck sweat. He never settled and he basically pulled too hard and pulled himself into the ground, really. That's what I saw. I thought the winner was very good. You put him up yesterday, Lydia, at 7-1. Yeah, yeah, I did. Went off so at 12s. Turn 12s. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that. You're welcome. <laughs> Right, so that's our review of the first day of the Cheltenham Festival. We'll be back again tomorrow.